like a house plant. You have to tend to it every now and again. Woo! It looks fantastic. Some even more white and green. These red peppers too, including the red pepper juices. Jus. Beautiful. Okay, back in the oven for a brief moment. Now for my strawberry galette. This is a very odd recipe, I think. I got it from a friend of mine who in fact made it in front of me. And the whole time I was standing there thinking, what are you doing? You're cooking strawberries. Because I always think of strawberries cooked as jam. And otherwise I think of them as raw. So it's a very strange tart because you actually put them in the oven. But they don't fall to pieces or go too jammy. They just soften a little bit and they get a stronger taste. It's a great tart. I was proven wrong. I'm gonna bake using my scale, and here is why. Everyone always thinks that baking with scales is so complicated, but it's actually really easy. So 200 grams of flour. And you can be so precise too. Not that I'm all that interested in precision. Then you push a little button, presto, and it goes back to zero. Now I need 150 grams of butter cut in. And I can add it right to the flour. It will add up to just the right amount. I'm oh, pretty good at eyeballing this. No washing of measuring cups, you see. A couple of teaspoons of sugar because this is a sweet tart. I don't want a sweet, sweet pastry, but a little bit, and a pinch of salt. So I'm just mixing this flour and butter together to a crumbly phase like that, and it crumbles to pieces. You make a well, and then just water. And then, mix master. Press it into a ball because I'm just going to set it in the fridge to chill a bit, which makes it easier to work with, and wrap it so it doesn't dry out. Got dough all over the refrigerator. Now my strawberries. This is supposed to be, you know, a, a rustic tart, so you can leave some of them whole, the small ones. We'll need a little bit of sugar, but I want to taste fruit, not sugar. Just a few tablespoons. I didn't give it all that much time. But every little bit helps. I'm gonna put on an apron, because I can just imagine. What I love about galettes is that they don't require any tart shell, because I don't have the patience for them, even though they look great. These are toasted almonds, ground up. And you just make a little mattress of ground almonds at the base of the tart, a quarter of a cup, say. And then you just scoop out your lovely, juicy, sugary berries. The only cooking it needs is just enough to get the crust golden and crisp. I'm just going to give it about 20 minutes until it's nice and crisp. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. And the berries are still holding their shape, but they're just softened a little bit. And all the juices are let loose. Not all of them, but those almonds will be soaking some of it up. So this will stay nice and crisp, and these will be wonderfully soft and sweet in the mouth. Next, I'm gonna make my first course, which is a lemon asparagus risotto.
exam's done. Time's up. I'm just gonna let it sit. And I can always reheat it later. It smells delicious. And these dishes are always better when they've had some time to sit around and mellow. Now, my risotto. This is lemon risotto, chiefly. But I'm also putting asparagus in it. Still, I think the lemon flavor is the top note. So I'm just going to trim the tips off here because they cook faster than the rest of the stock. So I'll add them a little later. And I'm also cutting off the tough ends. I'm chopping them in one inch pieces, say. Now risotto is, of course, an Italian dish, not French but you see it on French menus everywhere. It's really eaten very much like pasta. It's a popular, popular dish in France. I think I'll put some butter in there too. I'm just going to add chopped garlic and add it before this pan gets too hot because I don't want it to burn. I just want to soften it quickly. Now I'm gonna cut this off before it goes further. I'm adding the asparagus stalks and hmm, just some water. Now I'm going to wait till the water disappears, and when they're almost tender, I'll add the tips. Salt and pepper in the asparagus. Those are nearly tender, so I'll just add the tips. There we go. Garnish uh, ready already. And now risotto. First, I'm going to add a little oil and a bit of butter too for flavor. I'm chopping a shallot for the risotto too. Shallot. I'll just get it soft, not colored. So I want, I guess, a cup of rice. There are only three of us. This is arborio rice. They're very short grain and they absorb a lot of liquid. And you just stir the rice in the fat and the shallots until you just start to see a little dot of white in the center of each rice grain. Then wine. Half a cup. A Laura style half a cup. Once all the wine is absorbed, so you see no more liquid in the bottom of the pan, then you can go ladle by ladle adding hot stock. I'm going to season this now. It's fun to watch. It does take a little bit of time, but as you watch, you see the grains of rice just plump up as they drink in all that flavor. I want the stock very hot because it gets added gradually, and if you add it cold, then it's going to cool down the whole mixture. And so then, just add the asparagus and the lemon. The star ingredient. Lots and lots and lots of zest. And the last thing is Parmesan cheese, which brings it all together. Mm. Perfectly cooked. I love it. I love that it's such a creamy base, and then there are these bright, vibrant, sparks of lemon zest. It is my favorite kind of risotto. I'm going to love it with this asparagus. The thing about risotto though is that you have to eat it now. So I don't know where they are. I'm going to quickly change and then I'm going to make aperitifs and eat this risotto.